So, dudes, a respawn mode in Rainbow Six Siege has seemed like an obvious thing to add for some time now, at least if you are a professional Siege player. And the reason for this has very little to do with whether the mode is fun or not. I'm sure popping off and dropping a 40 bomb on kids in this mode is fun, but what I and many others would want is a better warm up and aim training environment. Right now, the best thing that we have is T Hunt, sorry, training grounds. As far as customizability goes in Siege's only single player mode that gets regular play, there's some, but not a lot. You can pick whatever map you want, so that's nice. And you can pick whatever attacker you want. And that's kind of it. Nobody plays hostage T-Hunt because there's simply not enough targets to choose from. So it makes aim training with your favorite operator's gun on defense a little bit difficult. This is annoying because every gun in Siege is unique. Specifically, every gun in Siege has its own unique recoil pattern. Getting a good control on a gun's recoil pattern in this game is the difference between losing and winning many gunfights, especially at high elo. Disarm Bomb offers the most amount of targets and will let you train a plethora of attacker weapons. At least you can train your mutant smoke shot with Sledge, but dying sends you back to the loading screen. Here's a comparison of the downtimes between T-Hunt and an aim training mode in CSGO. Bruh. 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 Come on, come on! Nah. This is taking too long! I'm gonna miss the farmer's market! Additionally, some maps are dotted with random C4s, which can immediately end your training session. You can memorize the spots they show up on to a certain extent, but sometimes the terrorists will randomly place them. Everybody says they like to run tea hunts while listening to podcasts or music. I do too. But if you get blown up by a C4 and tea hunt, you have to go through the you fail. screen, boot it back up, pick the operator, and wait for the countdown queue. And then if you go to get a pizza out of the oven and don't come back and pick your operator in time, you get randomly assigned one. Some maps don't have C4s on them. Like border, but border is more like board er. <laughs> helicopter, which would be provided at no cost to you, will be extracting injured person. I am once again asking, do not attempt to board the helicopter. And chalet, but nobody wants to play on the new chalet. They'd rather play on board again. And T hunt bots don't play like the average person. Well, maybe that's not entirely accurate. Some people don't play like T hunt bots. They don't quick peek. They don't shift W. They don't prone in the middle of a doorway. There are all sorts of rat things that rats do that bots don't do. They all have to do with movement. I would see the case for bots being good enough targets if they shot back very quickly and gave the player multiple trials, but they don't. The most efficient way to play T-Hunt is to put on Disarm Bomb, set it to normal difficulty, and then it's not even that efficient of an aim trainer. It's more like it's the best we have. A TDM mode would solve a lot of these issues. Players could pick whatever operator they wanted, gadgets aside, and go to town. Imagine if in order to do three sets of bench press at the gym by yourself, you'd have to rack the bar, get up off the bench, re-rack the weights, put the weights back on the bar, and then get back on the bench. Unless you're working in with someone, that doesn't make sense. You finish the set, rest, and do the set again. But that's all an argument for the TDM mode from a practical point of view. What do I actually think of the TDM mode? Is it... fun? What a weird word to say in terms of a video game. Well, it is fun. Sometimes. On the map that they designed for this, of which they gave Frost a million voice lines for, which I'm sure she was very happy about, the sight lines are very long, and a good chunk of the fighting is done outside. It's very much like a Call of Duty map with a mix of outdoor and indoor fighting. Or indoor to outdoor fighting. Or outdoor to indoor fighting. This is, of course, very different than the almost completely indoor nature of gunfights in Siege. What's the big deal about this? Well, it shows you, after several gunfights again and again and again, that Siege, as many well-established people in the scene will tell you, is not about gunplay. There are definitely cracked aimers out there, don't get me wrong. But the most immediate thing I noticed was that the same kind of way I played Call of Duty, 
which looks a lot more like this. Did not work in this. It doesn't really work in Valorant either, but the gunplay in Valorant is definitely a lot more faster paced. And the game certainly rewards you for very precise crosshair placement and listening to footsteps. At very long ranges, you absolutely have to know your spray patterns or you will get clapped quite a bit. This means that the likelihood of getting killed from really far away is lower and is part of the reason why the op is considered a power weapon. Same thing in CSGO. These weapons are designed this way to keep the gunplay in a certain state of balance. In Call of Duty, the time to kill is much longer and is more about tracking than click timing. So in a lot of long range fights, you can either get to cover or if you're better, turn and win the gunfight with a well-placed set of headshots. In Siege, if you get caught at long range, well, you're dead. And it doesn't really matter if they get a headshot or not. With the powerful rifles that this mode has, the R4C with a diet ACOG, which is terrifying to think about, the AK-12 and the C7E, you get melted even without a headshot most of the time. Now, I'm sure this would play out differently with different guns like the MP5, but for the time being, it demonstrates that duels between two players in Siege, it's more like fencing, and it can end quite literally in an instant. And since the gunplay can end that quickly, it means that Bob 243125124 can sit in the spawn and wait for people to hop out of the door of the building on the opposite end of the map. Bob 243125129241 might not have the same mechanical aim as XX Gunner 69420.LFT, but Bob still won his gunfight. There's like a million different things that happen before the gunfight starts that determine whether that player is going to win the gunfight. I think Siege has needed a proper warm up slash aiming practice mode for a long time. It may not be the bread and butter of Siege, but it's not supposed to be. And at the end of the day, Siege is still an FPS game. And as long as Siege is an FPS game, the one chaotic factor that can put a dent in any kind of strategy is if somebody can just out-aim their way out of that situation. And they should be able to do that. Anyways, that's what I think about the new TDM mode. Do you guys love it, hate it? Subscribe for more Siege content, and let me know what you thought. Deuces. Yeah.